I think it might be time for some real seating in this dining room. <laughs> wow! Yeah. It's also me, Sam from DIY Huntress. So Chris is here. Hello. Visiting New York for one day. So I'm putting him to work, obviously. And I need a bench, and he's a legit woodworker. So we're gonna build a bench together. We're gonna do it in one day. As in one. In one day. No, it's gonna be legit. We're gonna build a legit bench in one day. Yeah, yeah. Make it happen. All right, we only have one day, so let's get started. Well, I'm in New York to head up to East Durham for the Maker Camp Timber Inn. Figured I'd stop here at Sam's and have a little fun. However, with time not being on our side before I have to drive from Long Island to upstate New York, we went with a pre-made pine panel that we'll be able to cut all our components out of. This bench design is fairly rudimentary. It's two leg panels, a stretcher, and a seat, and we'll use some fairly basic joinery as a gateway drug for Sam and her DIY audience into the realm of real woodworking. How'd I do? Perfect. Good <gasps> yeah, so wow. we're going to um, make a tenon on this side. It's gonna be the thickness of the um, thickness of the board, okay. so of the seat. And then we'll do a corresponding mortise on the other side. Okay. In my head, I'm like, we can just like screw it. <laughs> Hide the scroll of the dowels. <laughs> If you don't follow Sam, well, go ahead and do that first, but she's in the middle of a shop shift since she just bought a new house. Therefore, all her tools and jigs are sort of strewn about between her house, the shed shop, the new shop, and her dad's shop. As such, we had to improvise a fair bit since she didn't have tall fences, a tenoning jig, or even a proper crosscut sled handy. Therefore, we kind of ended up improvising a bunch. To be fair, if this was in my shop, I probably would have built this bench entirely differently, but we worked with what we had and it seemed to work out quite well. Walk me through this. Okay, so we're creating a template to then use a router bit to be able to hog out all this material. I like it. Okay, so in order to do that, we have this scrap plywood here, and your job here is going to be to essentially create this little template. Now, um, we need something quick, fast, and dirty, so we are going to use some uh, CA glue that we have here. I'm gonna use some DAP weld wood, instant adhesive, quick, fast, and dirty. I, I guess we'll dab some of that in the corners, and you're gonna wanna sort of take extra care to cover as you're like lining this up, um, cover up your lines. So like just barely, you know, cover, cover up your pencil marks. Okay. And that way, like it'll be, you know, sort of the tightest fit, and then if we need to, at the end, we can adjust the fit by hand. Okay, cool, I'm on it. I think you can trust me with this one. As I was saying, if this was in my shop, well, I would have likely cut this notch out to accommodate the stretcher by hand or used a crosscut sled on the table saw to at least define the walls of my mortise. We opted to do some template routing to decrease the sketchiness factor. Even though Sam does have a saw stop, safety first folks, then teamwork. While Sam was setting up the template on one leg, I opted to do the other side of the tenon opposite the stretcher by doing a stop cut on the table saw and then finishing it with a handsaw. Since I was in New York for a timber framing event, I also had none of my finer joinery saws. In fact, my Ryobi I had in my bag was a 300 millimeter uh, carpentry saw. And Sam handed me this little guy, which unfortunately was missing a few teeth. A couple months after this build, when I saw her next, I actually gifted her a small Suizan saw so I wouldn't have to suffer through using this sucker again. Sam handled the router like an absolute champ. Again, this is a top bearing template or flush trim bit, whatever you want to call it, I suppose. And she's just riding the ply template with that bearing, and I'm coming in with a chisel after to knock out those rounded corners. Of course, I gave some poor instruction at one point, and she removed the template, only to discover she had to take one more pass at a greater depth before we could flip it to the other side. But it all ended up working out in the end. Flip it over. This would have been the perfect project for tomorrow's uh, router base. 
Oh, what if I have it too? Before we mess with the bottom bearing bit, Sam is taking the jigsaw out to get rid of a bulk of the meat here, which allows us to use that bottom bearing against what we've already cut with the top bearing bit to finish this pocket for the stretcher to sit in. Look at that. Look at that. Uh-uh-uh. Now I did it! Off camera, I knocked out the rounded corners and then proceeded to use the leg as a reference to mark out the through tenon from the stretcher. If you're curious about why we're using a stretcher, it provides increased strength across the length of the bench, which is good for butts of the bigger variety, but also eliminates racking or wobble from side to side, in the event those butts shift left and right vigorously instead of up and down. Really, when you're building a bench, you're just trying to find ways to make butts more comfortable and stable. I cut the stretcher tenon by hand. If you're new to my channel and my work, hand tool work is common, and honestly, I often feel more comfortable and confident cutting something by hand than putting something on a power tool and risking taking off just a hair too much material, which will then compromise fit and stability. Furthermore, I really appreciate developing my fine motor skills and overall skill set, and there's no better way to do that than by practice. lying if we didn't say that we 100% already put this thing together and forgot to film it. But here we go! It's pretty satisfying, not gonna lie. It's quite nice. Alright! It looks like a bench. Bench. <laughs> okay, so now we gotta make some more fancy jigs, like this guy. Yeah, and since there's gonna be like little inconsistencies between each of the tenons, I think it's more sensical for us to build the jig around each individual one and so we'll label them just a b c and d for each of these and we changed our mind we're not going to do through tenons anymore um we'll do what they call a blind tenon so it'll actually just be sitting into the seat of the bench as opposed to all the way through um but for the purpose of just naming everything we'll label it all now and then i'll cut these down on the table saw to about half the size to make our life a little bit easier I like your style. Yes. I like easy. Part of the head is missing for the main beam. Uh, well, that's great. This guy's still gonna buy the house. Of course he's still gonna buy it. Of course it's he is. Section eight house, and he's guaranteed money. Well, also too, it's like, why wouldn't you at this point? It's so hard to find a house. It's a two family. Legal too. Sam, you know what I'm also now thinking? Oh God, I just made the marks. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> What'd you do? What did you do? So see how I like just connected that line there? Yeah. Like. Then you you cornered this off of the actual piece, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll line this up off of that. And then yeah, it's that line. So then Yeah, right? Yes, that fits. We'll find out after we cut holes in. And then we're like, screw it in through the top. Just plug a dowel over it. It's fine. It's fine. Screw it in and put it in. I'm going to say that's an option in the video. Rolling. All right. So. In order to set the depth so that way we can have this half blind mortise or blind mortise whatever we're calling it these days um this is just a piece of scrap that we used from the template i'm going to set this on top and take our router and just kind of slide that down like that lock it in and then what remains obviously we have where our bearing here can you see me mm -hmm. we have where our bearing can ride on and then that will give you the depth of the tenon and then that will just drop right into our uh, bench top genius 
I do have to say working with Sam was such a pleasure and we both bring some parallel skills to the table in the sense that we both operate in small shops and tight spaces. While I was handling the mortise routing here with the sketchy plunge at the start, she was laying out and building the templates for the other mortises which made extremely fast work of this. Welcome to Sam and Chris talk about fancy woodworking things. And how to actually glue this up. So um, a lot of times I know that when I'm gluing up say like a panel, um, you know, we're sort of like trying to get that squeeze out. That's kind of like what the whole recommended thing is. But I noticed a lot of times with mortise and tenon, especially when it's blind like this, what ends up happening is people just sort of overfill the mortise with a ton of glue. They put their tenon in, and then it's just spurting out glue everywhere. It turns into a whole mess, you gotta clean it up, it's kind of a nightmare. So the idea is that we want to really focus where our glue is and have it more at the bottom of the mortise, uh, forced towards the corners, because really you're trying to get that end grain to, sorry, you're trying to get that edge grain to edge grain connection or face grain to edge grain connection. So having that glue in those specific locations is gonna be more beneficial and stronger. Okay, and because I'm a visual learner. We're gonna do that and show it to you. And then we're gonna freak out because glue is really stressful, but it's gonna be great. <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> Just wipe it on your shirt like a man. No, yeah. it's like to the, <laughs> that side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah. yeah, like a shroud up top. Because if you open this up right now, I guarantee it's. Yeah, are you running? Yeah, it's going. Oh, so he's just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a really important part. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> So yeah, we built this bench in an after basically an afternoon. We yeah. started after afternoon and it's what, six o'clock, seven o'clock? Yeah, it's about seven ten, but yeah. we've also been mucking around just I also couldn't find half my tools for half the day, so <laughs> We've been chit-chatting at least for 15 yeah. minutes. So, so yeah, so we were able to build this in an afternoon, which is like amazing. Thank you very much. You're most it's so welcome. legit. This is the most legit woodworking project in my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Chris is actually off on like fun adventures tomorrow. So I don't get to keep him for another day after this. Unfortunately. Sucks. So I'm going to finish this tomorrow without Chris. I know, it's sad. But what are you going to do to it? I mean. Okay, so That's I'm definitely going to stain it, I think, like, black. Listen, it's your bench. Go follow Chris, go sub to his channel, go check him out on social. He's super talented, does a lot of hand tool stuff. I feel like a legit woodworker today. Go team. Oh, God. <laughs> the next day. So, unfortunately, Chris had to leave. Mm. It's so much more fun to build and make your friends. It's like way fun to build a maker friends. I wish that all my maker friends could come visit me and build with me. I am going to unclamp this thing. It's looking good. And then I'm going to give it a good sanding, stain it, put a coat of finish on it, and then head on into this dining room and we can finish up this dining room makeover. I'm really excited about it. So let's do it. Okay, friends, check-in time. So. I really, wow, <laughs> I really think that I want to go like this black stain, like really dark black stain for this bench because literally everything in that like nook accent wise is matte black. So 
I tried out two different stains. I tried out an oil-based stain and a water-based stain. The oil-based stain kind of, like you could see the green a lot better in the oil-based stain, stain. It still is bringing out like that yummy texture in the pine where the water-based stain is, has like great coverage, but I don't want great coverage. I really want to see some of the grains. So I'm going to go with the oil-based stain. It takes a little longer to dry, but I think that it's going to look really cool when it's done. And I actually cannot wait to see this in the space with the custom table that she And that does it for this one. Simple dining bench with basic joinery, start to finish in 24 hours. Butts will be happy. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time here at Cowdog Craftworks. Mm -hmm.